if the banshee isn't here, like in physically in the house until two or three a.m., she'll call me. It, her justification for this is that she knows I'm awake, so why not? So we were at dinner a couple weeks ago. Uh, me, my mom, my mom's friend, and the banshee were all at dinner together. And we're talking about this for some reason, how she insists upon calling me to tell me nothing all the time, including like, like there's, 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 there's some semblance, there should be some semblance of rules for when you decide to call people. Like after midnight, you don't usually call people unless it's important. If you have absolutely nothing to say, you shouldn't be calling people after midnight. It's, it's just, it's courtesy. It's, it's just, it, it's, it's courtesy. There's, there's nothing more than that. It's courtesy. You don't do that unless it's an emergency. And most people are going to assume it's an emergency because you're calling them after midnight. Like you, you just you just don't do that. You don't. So we're having a conversation. And when my sister gives her justification that she knows I'm up, so why doesn't she talk to me? Okay, we understand you're lonely. But some, like, beam of enlightenment shone down from the heavens upon my mother, who, generally speaking, gets nothing. And she looks at Banshee and she goes... <coughs> Al, that's not what she said. My mother looks at the banshee and she goes, but what could you possibly have to say at two in the morning? That's the same question I wonder every night that my, my phone lights up. What do you have to say? When you call people, you should have something to say. What do you have to say? Don't call me to say nothing. When someone meets my family, they inevitably ask, how are you, you? Why is that, you ask? <laughs> Have I got a story for you. Okay, one of the funniest things before I get into what the rest of this episode er, is about uh, is that my family has just started to watch on fairy tales, uh, specifically the Banshee and her husband, and they fucking love it. And, like, everyone else of my friends is like, I, I don't understand. You, you shit on them for, like, 20 minutes at a time. And they're like, fuck yeah, give me more! Especially the Banshee, she's like, I want more episodes about myself. And I'm like, I... What? I, I, I mean, I guess. But here's one! One thing you have to know about the Banshee is that she's super in tune with her Facebook feed. And also, as I've described before, all of your friends are also her friends by default, even if they've literally never spoken to her before. Um, so all of her friends are also your friends. So she's going to friend them on Facebook. Like people I don't even talk to on Facebook, she friends. And it's just, I, I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, uh, but instead of being like a normal person, remember how I said she calls you to tell you nothing? Instead of being a normal person, if she sees something interesting on Facebook that's related to you, she will call you and tell you about it instead of being a normal person and hitting like or share, or tagging you in a post. No, she'll call you basically to give you a comment. Just put, put on the script. There's a whole, there's a whole area just for leaving comments. I don't, huh? She'll also ask you about your friends. And I don't mean like, she'll be like, oh, what are they up to? No, she'll be like, did you see so-and-so's post on this? And I'll be like, Yes, because they are my friend too? Like, I don't know where you're going with this, but it's just kind of weird when someone's like, that person that you used to talk to all the time in college, they're doing this and this and this. And I'll be like, okay, sure. You have a lot of time on your hands. It's the only real thing I'm getting here. You have a lot of time on your hands. She also will read, she reads literally everything that anyone has ever posted and she'll tell you about it. And it's just so weird because like, I'm sure as most of you, like me, myself, and I'm sure most of you out there do as well. When you're on Facebook, you don't read every single post. You just kind of scroll through and when you see something interesting, you're like, Boop. which is what I do because I follow a page called Boop the Snoot and it's just pictures of dogs with their faces way too close to the camera. So um, it's amazing. And someone had commented on the page one day that was like, does anyone else actually say boop when they hit the like or the love button or whatever? Is it, is it just me? And I was like, 
It was just you, but it's about to also be me. Boop, boop, boop. Because I love to boop noses. Ah, I don't know why I just love to boop noses. Boop. <laughs> Gotta boop the snoop, man. <laughs> I'm choking on my own spit. <laughs> I'm thinking about all the noses that I've booped <laughs> in like the past 24 hours on the page. <laughs> ah, but see, so this one time. Now, remember, my sister reads everything anyone posts. She either has a lot of time on her hands, or, as that dude told her on a date one time, you're either very observant or very boring. Uh, a little bit of both, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Uh, and sometimes I post, like, actual rants. Like, I have long... I actually used to write notes, uh, like, detailing my how I felt at the time and what have you. Like, I was one of those Facebook users, and occasionally I'll post something like that. And uh, this one time I posted this long rant, and then I talked about how angry it made me, and I described it in very colorful terms. I posted this thing on a day where I was super pissed off at everybody, and I just wanted a day to recharge, a day with nobody. I left a note on my dining room table that was like, please don't bother me today. Just, just leave me alone. Just go about your business. Don't talk to me. And I turned off my phone. And the next day, I turned my phone back on, and I was so happy I had turned off my phone because I had like eight new voicemails, like 20 texts. I was like, nobody ever talks to me. I'm so glad I decided not to keep my phone on that day. I was just so mad, so fed up with everybody. And what I posted was, after I saw all those texts come up, I was like, if I had had my phone on yesterday, I would have murdered each of you individually and then hired a necromancer so that I could revive you, a, I could revive you. And then I would kill you again. But it probably wouldn't be a top tier necromancer because I hear resurrection costs a lot of mana and I don't know if I can afford a top tier necromancer. And my aunt shared it because she's, 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 she's a real person and you know, not blood related to me and therefore that brings her sanity level like way higher than most of the rest of my family and she thought it was funny. So she shared it. And my sister commented on her share of the post that was like, don't share his posts when they're negative like this. And all my friends send me messages privately. They all DM me. They're like, she's only saying that because she knows it's about her. And I'm like, I would hire, one of my friends is like, you should just hire the shittiest necromancer ever because it doesn't matter what state they come back in. You're just going to kill them again. And I was like, oh, I would revive her like a million times just to kill her again. Oh, it would be amazing. You also need to remember, you also need to remember that the Banshee knows literally everything. There is not a single topic on this planet that she doesn't know the ins and outs of. And when I say that, you should know it is dripping with extreme sarcasm. She's not. There's nary a topic on this planet that she knows, like, a majority about. So, she just talks a lot. Think of like having an ass face when you talk out of your ass. Like her on every topic is just replace her head with an ass. Just whoop, and then whoop, you just all, all that. Just oh yeah, oh talking out of. She is like the queen of talking out of her ass. Ah, oh, it's so annoying. But it also leads to one of my most like oh one of my intense pet peeves is when someone asks you for help and then either talks over or screams over you when you give them the answer that they're looking for because obviously they know more about the topic even though they ask you for help. And that just makes me angry. Uh, one of my favorites is when, you, I, I'm sure as most of you my age or in my generation would understand where, where the IT specialists for our families, but they'll ask us questions and then they'll, you know, my, the, the Banshee especially will just talk over you while you give her the answer. And I have so much, I, I have heard so many stupid things about computers and other electronics from her over the years that just, oh. one thing that stuck with me when I was little, I used to be so scared. She was like, you can't turn a Walkman upside down. The laser will shoot through it. And I fucking believed her. Okay, I understand if the Walkman is on. No, she, she meant at any time. At any time, you can't turn a Walkman upside down. Not, okay, some of you may be older than that and you're thinking Walkman like the actual cassette tape player. No, when I say Walkman, I mean the CD player. I, okay, I'm just, it, I, 
I don't mean the really old version, I mean the semi-old version. The CD player with the laser, because the cassette deck obviously doesn't have lasers, it has the spinny things. Uh, I should probably know the term for that, but I don't. So whatever is whatever. Uh, and she would just, oh, just stupid things, like the power bank last episode. How do you, oh, what? Why would you buy a power bank if it only, if you could only use it once? What would be the point? You would buy batteries then. That's what batteries are. It is not a battery. It has a different name. It has a different purpose. Just, uh, <laughs> One of my favorite things though, is that she tells me how eBay works. Like she apparently thought that you only listed things. You could only possibly list things on eBay for three days at a time. And then after that, they just go away. And she thought what I was doing was when someone would give me merchandise to sell, I would list it for three days, and if it didn't sell, I would give it back. And, okay, first of all, you can't... Your turnover rate would have to be amazing. You have to be shipping... First of all, you have to be able to ship worldwide. And you'd have to know, like, every language to be able to sell your product. And just, ah, that's... No, that would never work. But she would also... She also likes to tell people how I do my business and other things and okay you know she ran the cafe for a while and when you work in the food industry or I guess technically what restaurant industry I guess uh, one of the tenets for making prices is you make prices based on three times the price of your ingredients that's a thing uh, because that's also factoring in how much it costs to buy the items. Then it's also factoring in uh, your preparing and your serving, like the payment for that. And so she tried to tell me that's how you do eBay as well. You have to sell everything for three times the price you purchased it for. And while that would be amazing if I could do that, like if I bought games at twenty dollars and I was selling them all for sixty, not counting the dot hack games because you can do that with them. If you buy dot hack games in a store, they're usually twenty bucks, but they all sell for sixty. Just a little video game hack there for you guys if you want to make some quick cash. <laughs> if you can find the dot hack games, the original series. I don't know about GU, maybe GU, maybe not. I'm not sure, but you can usually buy them in a store for twenty dollars. They'll sell online for sixty, give or take. So it's it's quite a. That one actually makes sense for the three times the price. But if you took everything you found in the store and you sold it for three times the price, no one would buy it. Not that many people are stupid. I was going to say no one is that stupid, but there are stupid people on the planet. But it's not going to work with everything, obviously. No one's going to buy your pencils for like $30. No, it's not going to happen. Sorry. But she also would tell people what my status was on eBay. And it wasn't that. And she would explain to me what the seller status levels were. And I'd be like, that doesn't even exist anymore. You must have heard that one day. And then you put in some preconceived notion of what you thought would be amazing to do. And you put them together. Because as we talked about before, memories are kind of malleable. And just, ah, oh, it's so obnoxious. Like, she'll actually fight with you in public. I, I, I don't know why I took it as though I was my mother and having people see me do bad things in public offends me. No, not really. Doesn't, doesn't bother me all that much. But just like she'll fight with you. What I meant by in public as it being awful was that she doesn't care how many people hear how much of a moron she is. I, most people care about that at least. But like... Everyone's staring at you because you're an idiot. It's not because you're fighting, it's because you're an idiot. Ah, but my favorite thing by far, okay, her husband was in, uh, I don't know how to explain this. So there's like NASCAR, and then there's like, I wanna call it the NASCAR B League, but obviously I know nothing about NASCAR because that's not something I care about, like literally at all. Uh, but there's like NASCAR, if you consider that A League, and then B League of NASCAR. He was in B League of NASCAR. He knows about cars. He's been a mechanic like all his life. He can he can basically take apart and rebuild a car by by hand all by himself. It doesn't matter what car, he'll know. He 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 knows about cars. He knows everything he needs to know about cars. And my sister, his wife, 
will tell him how to fix cars. And we were arguing, uh, I was I was talking to it with Grim, talking to Grim about it a while back. And Grim was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your sister is telling your family and her husband how to work on cars. Wasn't he in NASCAR? Like they have NASCAR in, the, they have car in the name. I think he might know a little bit more about cars than his wife. But according to my sister, that's not true. No. She knows way more about cars than he does. So we love to hear. She'll give you like a, a diagnosis on what's wrong with your car. And it's like, whew, nothing even close to what's actually wrong with your car. But she'll be so fucking adamant about it. And then he'll come in and be like, uh, actually, let me tell you. She'll be like, no, I'm right. No, you're not. You're not right. No. No, no, Mr. Superman, no. But one thing actually has come out of this. He was explaining to me how turbo engines work because they're different than regular engines. And while I could not replicate the process, like I could not explain this to you in detail, I sort of understand how they work now. Uh, but whenever my brother goes to tell a story, uh, his wife either interrupts, because that's what she does, or she tells a story on top of his story until he stops talking. And she doesn't understand why this would be annoying and or discourage him from speaking at all. But now she jokes about it because he was explaining the science behind it and the mechanics and stuff to me, which is stuff I like to hear. I, I like to learn. I like to learn for the sake of learning. And especially if it's a topic that I know nothing about, I love to just have just a little bit of knowledge in everything. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. That's my thing. I, I know a little bit about everything. And he, he was explaining it to me. And my mom and my sister, the entire time he was explaining, were either giggling or making snoring noises. And now it's a joke where she's like, I need to go to sleep because she doesn't sleep, obviously, because she's up at two and three in the morning, either here watching TV or at home calling me. Uh, so she doesn't sleep. She'd be like, I need you to put me to sleep. Tell me the turbo story! And now it's a big joke where anytime he goes to tell a story, she'll start, she'll, she'll get real close to his face. Real, real close. Wow, it's super dark in my room, even though it's not actually dark, but I can't have a lamp. And that's a story for later. I apologize, but she, she'll get real, real close to his face. Real close. And she'll be like, is this another turbo story? Can I take a nap? And my brother will be like, I don't understand what you don't see about your actions and the way you act that discourages me from speaking. So he basically does not speak at all when she's around. And I can 100% sympathize because I'm the same way. Like, I'm happy and animated whenever my family's not around, but they just say stupid things at the top of their lungs all the time. And I don't want to compete with that. Like, you don't want to compete with stupidity, so you just don't say anything at all. And that's kind of how I'm I'm living my life right now. I'm going with the down low flow of avoiding the stupidity. I'm trying to be as aerodynamic as possible. Oh, but it's so hard with this family. It's so hard. Uh, this one time, sort of recently, the Banshee came to visit. And she was already screaming before she got in the house. So it's absolutely normal to us at this point, because that's pretty much all she does, is scream. She does not have an indoor voice. Indoor voice was not one of the features that were installed on her OS when she was born. I don't, I don't know why, it's just not a thing that was there. Sorry. Uh, and she came into the house screaming already, which is totally normal to us. So when she came in the house, we were all supposed to go somewhere. My mom walked up to her and she was like, oh, you forgot this last time. She handed her some items. And the screaming most likely directed at her husband, who was not there, but I'm sure he pissed her off by simply existing in her presence. Uh, you know, the usual. Uh, when my mom was like, here, you left this last time, and handed it to her, the screaming immediately became crying. And she trudges up the stairs, screaming and crying, and one of the things she screams is, I've never felt so unwelcome in my life! And then it became more screaming and more crying. And at this point, I'm giggling. Because <laughs> I'm in my room. 
and I think it's fucking hilarious. Uh, but she's coming up the stairs, so I have to, you know, compose myself. You gotta do the. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Because you don't want to antagonize her when she's already crazy. Like, once she's gotten into belligerent mode, you might as well just shut the fuck up. Because she's not gonna listen to a word you say anyway. Doesn't matter. Comes up the stairs, she gives me her hug hello. She needs the endorphins, and she goes downstairs. And then my mom says something to her. Probably like, can you maybe calm down a little bit? And that sets her off further, and she just stomps out of the house. Now, we were all supposed to go somewhere that day, but she left. She went home. And apparently what my mother had said was, I can't even. I can't even with you. And my sister stomped out of the house. Gone. And I go downstairs, and I'm like, yo, I've never gotten her to leave anywhere. Like, ever. And you just said, I can't even? Damn, I wish I had that power. Can you imagine how easy it would be if I could just be like, I can't even, and she would leave? Oh, oh, I would kill for that power. My mom's like, shh, she'll hear you and come back. Hey there, guys and gals. Thanks so much for watching, as always. If you click the link on the left, you'll be taken to the previous episode. If you click the link on the right, you'll be taken to the playlist where you can watch them all.